Hey guys, so welcome to the very first monthly favourites of the year. I kind of cut down on these a lot last year and I didn't do too many um, because I think it's nicer to kind of wait and build up a lot of, of things to show you instead of the same stuff over and over again. So similar thing is going to happen this year. I do really like to do a January favourite so I think it's a nice start to everything. I'm actually going to start with beauty stuff because I briefly mentioned... I think probably all of these in my last video, I did a get ready with me, my everyday makeup. So this really is the stuff that I've been wearing daily. So hence had to be featured in my favorites. Um, these are actually all kind of duos. They all go together. So first one is the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer with the Real Techniques. Still don't know the name of this brush. <laughs> I think it's from the Blue series um, and it is the setting brush I believe. Um, what I like about these is that they're synthetic so they do work perfectly with cream products. I was kind of surprised by how many of you guys told me uh, not to use this brush with this foundation or tinted moisturizer. Brushes are brushes guys, put whatever you want on your face, wherever you want it, if it works for you. Um, I personally just love the combination of like a really fluffy, fluffy brush to buff in tinted moisturizer. And I've used it with a few other things, I've used it with foundations, still really like it. So yeah, massive shout out to this brush, it's the BO2. And especially with the tinted moisturizer, the Pure Radiant from NARS, um, this has been a favorite for many years. I kind of go back and forth with it, but it's always in my kind of top three tinted moisturizers. It's moisturizing, but I think it is an oil-free formula. I'm pretty sure. I also have the shade Alaska, which is a little bit darker than my skin tone. And I feel like especially now that it is really gross and gray outside, I like to have a bit more warmth and just putting this on alone really makes me look a bit more healthy. And that's always what I want. So yeah, that's been my favorite base. Eyelash combo next um, is this mascara and lash curlers. So I was chatting in that makeup video uh, about my lash curling journey. Never used to do it. I'm a very lazy girl when it comes to beauty routines. I don't really spend a lot of time on them, which is strange because I love beauty and I love makeup, but I like to take shortcuts as well. <laughs> but yeah, I've been curling my lashes, which is new for me. Um, I feel like it's kind of become a bit of an addiction now because I actually can't stop. These are the Kevin Aquan lash curlers, which I think are great, really good. They hold the curl for a long time. They only need a few squeezes and they do the job and they're quite comfortable on my eyes too. And um, on top of that, I usually have been reaching for this Maybelline Lash Sensational Waterproof Mascara. There is definitely a love-hate relationship going on with this mascara because it is such a pain to take off and I think that's probably going to be the case with most waterproof formulas um, and I'm just not used to them but I mean I've got my biophase eye makeup removers I can do it it's just again a bit more of a process so the reason I have been using it though is just the way it looks it's got this really cool like curved brush but it's still quite fat I think it's quite rare to find such a volumizing mascara that is also very separating and not clumpy so I'm not sure if the original formula the non-waterproof one is as good but I know this one holds the curl and makes my lashes look great so yeah that's been my favorite mascara this month so these two have been my go-to lip combo I don't really think I've worn anything else apart from these together just for an everyday look or in fact pretty much every single time I've worn makeup so this is the Dior Lip Glow Color Reviver Balm they brought some new shades out of this recently and I have the coral color which is really pretty, it's nice, it's kind of like a bit peachy, a bit orangey, kind of matches my jumper. But it sort of adapts to your lips, it tints them, it goes a bit more pinky on me. I think I must have either quite alkali lips or something. Am I making that up? Is that how these work? Something about pHs, right? I'm sure. Flashback to science class in year 11. So this I put on underneath. It's a really nice moisturizing lip balm. Um, I really enjoy that. And then on top of it, to kind of just mute it down, I do prefer a matte finish with my lips. I use this one. It's the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream, one of my favorite formulas for lipstick ever. They're just they're good. And um, this one is in the shade Stockholm. So it's what I'm wearing on my lips today, the two of these together. It's such a good kind of neutral, everyday nude with a hint of pink and a hint of brown. It just sits right down the middle and they feel so comfortable. I think it is also the combination of the lip balm underneath, but it's not a drying matte lipstick at all. It feels really nice, but it also just looks very matte and just like I want it to. So yeah, that is the third and final little combo for beauty that I've been loving. So I've also had quite a few questions from you guys about my hair this month. I don't often talk about my hair in videos because to me it's just the same thing every single day, 
but I have recently had it cut, I think about a week ago. I went quite short. Pretty much still looks the same as it usually does, but to me, um, this is the perfect length. It's kind of like just shoulder brushing if I do this. More so how I've been styling it is what you guys have been wanting to know. And I have actually found something new that I am so so in love with. Um, I feel like this has changed my life just slightly over the last month. So normally I would curl my hair with straighteners, which I kind of really got down um, and into a good routine that I could do it in about three minutes flat. But more recently I've actually switched over to a wand, which I feel like I was kind of avoiding them because I feel like they take a bit longer, but the actual finished result is so much better. It lasts so much longer. If I curl my hair with straighteners, I have to do it every single day. Um, whereas if I use this, I can do it once I've washed it and then I won't have to do it again. And it just gives really nice, relaxed, messy kind of waves, which is definitely my jam. That's what I want for my hair. But this one is from Cloud9. They have two sizes. Um, this one is the curling wand. So they have a thicker one, which is the waving wand, but this one is actually the curling wand. And I think it's like a one and a half inch barrel. Not all curling wands are made equal, however. Some of them are just really, really bad. They don't hold the curl in my hair, which is probably the main thing I look for when it comes to a wand. But this one, it just seems to work. It just seems to gel right with my hair and the curls really stick around. So yeah, I've kind of just abandoned all my other hot tools and this is the only thing I use. So a few styling products that I want to shout out as well. Um, the first being this one, it's the Moroccan Oil Dry Texture Spray. I think for the last six months now, I've been using Moroccan Oil products pretty much exclusively in my hair. I use the shampoos, um, the styling products, the setting products, literally everything. Kind of started with me just wanting the smell, but trying a lot of things for that reason, I actually got to really liking them for what they did to my hair. Um, so the Dry Texture Spray. This is better than Orbe. I know a lot of people love Orbe, it's hella pricey, like ridiculously so. I think this is about half the price. You could probably get three bottles of this for the Orbe one. It just does what I want it to do. It gives my hair texture without it feeling sticky or gritty. It doesn't have that really kind of like chalky feel to it, which I feel like some texturizing sprays do. It's just amazing. I can't do my hair without using this now. So highly, highly recommend. Probably one of the best styling products I've ever used. And there is one thing now that I do use for my hair that isn't from Moroccan Oil, just one. It's the Way Hair Care Matte Pomade. So pomades are kind of tricky to use, I think, but if you get them right, oh, they really make such a difference. I basically take just a tiny, tiny bit, like covering my fingertip, massage it into my fingers, and then I do this thing where I twist the bottoms of my hair. So I kind of run it through, especially on the fringe, because I like these bits to kind of fall quite straight. I run it through like that and then I will just sit there and twist it in to the ends of my hair. And I think that's how I kind of get this like slightly piecier texture. It kind of breaks up some of the waves and the curls um, instead of just being flat and blunt because I have quite a blunt cut. Um, I like to do that to kind of just break those little bits up. I read four books this month. I, well, uh, maybe like three and three quarters, let's just say. Um, but yeah, I read quite a lot in the break that I took in January, which I really enjoyed. I've actually set myself a reading challenge on Goodreads. If you don't follow me, I do have Goodreads now. Still don't really use it that much, but I have uh, my reading challenge on there. I think I set myself two books a month, or maybe was it three? So you can keep up with that on there if you guys are into that. So this is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. How cool is this cover? I really enjoy this. Um, oh, actually I did enjoy it until I read it and now it kind of just creeps me out. So this book I read at night and I <laughs> wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. I read this in two sittings. Um, I got about halfway through the first time and I couldn't turn the lights off. I couldn't even close my eyes. I was that creeped out. So I just kind of kept reading and kept reading until I eventually fell asleep. Um, because that's the thing about this book. It is creepy and weird, but it does make you want to keep reading. As always, I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers, but the basic premise of this is that there is an area that's been discovered that's a little bit strange and weird um, and misaligned with nature. And they send people in to kind of investigate and see what's going on. And there's been like a few groups that have gone. Um, and this one follows, I think it's the 11th group that go into Area X, which is what it's called. Um, yeah, and they're all women. I think there's four women, which I like. I like that there's a lot of uh, female 
characters in this. This really is like nothing I've ever read. Um, and just the fact that it had such an effect on me that it did really, really creep me out and really got to me, I kind of like because it's not often that books get that deep into my soul. There is another book that I read last year called Nod, which did a similar thing. Um, I recommend you guys read that because it's so weird, but that also kind of stuck with me too. And I feel like this one is sticking around. So yeah, I did actually really enjoy this considering it's not my kind of thing normally. Um, and there's actually two more books in the series, so I might give those a go. So after that, I read The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. I've had this sitting on my shelf to read for so long. I thought I'd read this, um, but I hadn't. So I picked it up after Annihilation because I thought it would be a little bit more happy and nice. And I was wrong. I was very wrong. Um, I actually really enjoy the first half of this book. It's set in 17th century Amsterdam. Um, it's about a young girl who goes to live there with her new husband. I didn't expect the storyline to kind of take the turn that it did, um, but it was very gripping and I really got into it. It's a little bit magical, which I like as well. Um, but yeah, it's quite a tough ride towards the end, you know, when you're screaming at something because you don't want it to happen and then it does and you kind of just like, Ugh. Um, but no, I did really like it. I really liked the whole premise of it. So yeah, that was The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. Then I read, um, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I was trying to think about how to talk about this book, um, for quite a while because the first couple of chapters I really got quite absorbed into and I couldn't stop reading it but they made me feel so uncomfortable. I can't really pinpoint why. I think maybe the way in which um, Gail Honeyman writes the main character who is Eleanor is so different to anything that I've read before but at the same time there was kind of like a familiarity there which I think made me a little bit uneasy. This is probably a bit too deep um, and there's there's a lot of stuff in here that I relate to a lot and it's quite deep cutting. Um, but actually it's very uplifting, which is strange, but good too, because for something that does have this kind of subject matter, it's nice to feel a little bit, yeah, lighter when you come out of it. So I didn't finish this book and then feel awful. In fact, the further I got into it, the better it made me feel. And I ended up really, really enjoying it. I think this is definitely one to read. I know a lot of people have been recommending this. Super engaging too, like I did not want to put this down at any point. I never got bored of it. I kind of didn't want it to stop. I wanted it to keep going um, and just read more and more about this character who um, is really, really interesting. So this one was probably my favorite read of January. The final book, I I picked up was Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ackerman. So this is the one that I haven't quite finished. Um, I'm not giving up on it, but I haven't really felt tempted to pick it up since I kind of got, I think I'm about this much of the way through it. Um, I did actually end up watching the film instead of carrying on reading it. Um, and that's because I just found it very intense. This is a really intense book to read because the way in which Elio narrates this, you're basically inside his head and it is just an endless, almost endless stream of consciousness and thought, like a monologue. There's not really any chapters in this, so it's not an easy one to pick up and put down. There's no real place to stop and I found that really difficult. Normally I would read this sort of size book in one go but um, it was just so much to take in. The writing is beautiful, like some of the passages in this are just stunning, like I read them over and over again because the writing is just gorgeous. But a lot of it just goes on and on and on and I feel like you have to be in the right frame of mind to read this kind of book. I will finish it, I will sit down and finish it. Um, but like I said, I did watch the film, which I found really interesting because this is so much set in the mind of the main character that the film can't possibly translate all those thoughts and feelings. So if you have only seen the film, definitely read this because I feel like you get so much more from it. Had I just watched the film, I don't think I would have really known what was going on. It's a beautiful film though, and I, I loved the music in it too. So I wanna talk about this next thing a little bit quickly. I thought this was a good place to do it. Um, but for the whole of January, I actually did veganry. Veganuary? Veganry? Still not quite sure how we're saying that. Um, but yeah, I decided to join in with quite a few people. Um, it's kind of a thing, I think. I'm not sure who started it. I think vegan's quite a big word. It's quite a big, scary word that, I don't know, there's a lot of perfectionism revolved around it and really kind of, you know, hardcore thinking about every single aspect of your life. And that is a lot to take on. So for me, it was mainly just in terms of the food that I ate. I cut out all animal products and basically just tried to eat 
more plant-based, um, no dairy, no eggs, anything like that. And I don't really drink milk or eat a lot of dairy as it is. I've been a vegetarian for like 15 years now. But yeah, I really enjoyed it and it is now the uh, 8th of February and I'm still doing it. I still um, am cutting out animal products and things like that because I just feel so much better. If I have taken one thing from this whole month, I just feel so much better in my body and myself. I'd be really interested to kind of get some intolerance testing done and see if dairy is something that I'm a little bit sensitive to because yeah, my stomach has just felt clearer and better. I feel like I'm digesting things more and yeah, I just feel great in my body and I think just responding to the way you feel when you do something is all you can really take from it. It's all about you. So I wanted to mention a YouTuber favorite in this video who so helped this month. I couldn't have done it without her recipes and her food ideas um, and that is Jess from Jessica Beautician. I've been watching Jess for years. I love that girl. Um, she used to live in Turkey but she moved to Ireland. She is originally from the UK um, and she just has the best taste in not only food um, but beauty products, skincare, all that sort of thing. She does a few different things on her channel but she's kind of been really focused on making vegan videos in the last like year or couple of years or so I'd say. She does amazing what I eat in a days. So there's so much useful information that I think a what I eat in a day is a really good way to kind of not only just pick a few recipes but see how they all fit together. I ate a lot of food this month, for real. I ate a lot of food. There was no depriving at all um, and some really, really yummy, yummy things. So I highly recommend going and checking Jess out. She's a must to watch. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention her quickly. So guys, those are my January favourites. I feel like I've been filming this for about a year taken so long it's dark outside now can't speak properly anymore uh, but I hope you enjoyed chatting about my favorite things or oh, I was the one chatting actually you were just listening so that is it for me today thank you guys all so much for watching um, as always I'd love to know what your favorite products were this month or just your favorite thing whatever it was leave me a comment down below so that is it for me today and I will see you all soon bye